Hi everybody, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we have a very, very heavy topic. It is pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. Like I'm pretty blue just from the just from the uh I'm actually really excited. Uh, you might be excited, but man, I I definitely fell silent. This is, this is probably our heavy podcast for the season. Yeah. Although I don't know, we've had some pretty heavy ones and the season's not even half over. No, do you think we have a social responsibility to try to tackle heavy things where we are allowed to speak? Um, or where we are can come. A, from I think position. yes. Um, but B, I think even if we didn't, I didn't feel a sense of social responsibility to do it. I would want to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about social justice and social responsibility on the channel. So mm-hmm. this is just an hour long extension of that, and we'll probably in an hour. But mm-hmm. we'll see what we, we get there. But mm-hmm. first, we're going to do an actual fun icebreaker. Mm-hmm. Ryan, Jim, what is one thing you're going to do this summer? One thing you're excited to do. I yeah, guess. I mean, like... Uh, I don't like sc- scratch your butt. The weather is hopefully starting to warm up, and you hate winter. Cause you I do. Ha- you don't want to fall down and bust your ass. I don't. As, as you've said before on one of your bl- your vlogs. And yeah. I actually fell down this winter and broke something. Yeah. Um, broke my ankle, in case you're just joining us for the first time. Uh, so, we're looking forward to some warmer weather. The last couple years I have been saying that it's been far too long since I've gone camping uh, and I have a buddy of mine who uh, he goes up to Algonquin every summer with some high school friends it's like a yearly tradition I don't know how long he's been doing it but they go up there for a week and canoe up in uh, in mm-hmm. Algonquin I'm not quite as hardcore as him my beard is a little shorter um, so I would say this summer I would really like to go uh, find a decent section of the Bruce cha- the Bruce Trail nearby with a couple friends and maybe do a one or two night um, hike trip. That makes no sense to me because I hate nature and I hate the outdoors. <laughs> what can I say? You know, it's, it's, I used to do it as in cadets and, uh, and well, I What you can abroad. say is, yes Jim, I'm foolhardy and I like to place myself in proximity to bears. Sure. Um, but I don't know. I've never seen a bear, so I, I don't have a realistic sense of fear of I'm them. I'm saying yet. there's bears out there. So, yeah, we'll go with it. But, anyways, that's me. Jim, what's one cool thing you want to do this summer? Uh, I want to do lots of cool things this summer, but if I had to pick one, I would pick one that involves staying in the city. So I'm going to participate more in municipal politics. Because I'm boring. And also because municipal politics are essential. And there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the city. So that means going to town halls and going to some town council meetings. And you know, I think I might join you on that one. That would make for a pretty cool video. At the very least, we wouldn't be bored because we'd be together. Also, there's Twitter. No, oh, there's Twitter. Anyways, yeah, no, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. You know, we, we, should, we could probably have a, a whole another podcast where we're not talking about why you should vote instead talk about why you should engage yeah i mean there's there's a lot there's a lot more to municipal politics and politics in general than voting yeah uh today's topic has a bit to do with politics we didn't actually say what the topic was just that it was heavy yeah it is radicalism and and radicals and moderates and this was inspired by our podcast with ay which, our, our race together podcast, yeah, which we can probably link over my face. Oh, I thought you were pointing to my face. That no, time. no, ah. I know my place. Good. Um, so yeah, Ay had accused us of being rightly moderates. so. Rightly so, she accused us of being moderates, which kind of struck Jim and I weird because when we were reflecting on it, I, I am of course the moderate. I have no no um, qualms with that, but you're often. Leaning more on the radical side. I, 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 yeah, I, I sort of, I play, I play the radical for the podcast, and I sort of attempt to play the radical in real life, mm. um, because it is important, and because moderates suck, and because we should all be gadflies. Yes. Sorry, Socrates reference. Uh, the <laughs> philosopher in me will never die. I love Plato. <sighs> I know, but yeah, I mean, I mean, the the question really is, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, we talk about A-Y a- 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 being a radical in reference to us and that she is more radical than me. Yeah. That is definitely true yeah. um, and is awesome. Yeah. But, I mean, I would define radicalism, and we'll, we'll, get, some, we'll get some actual papers on this in the show notes, mm-hmm. but um, I would define radicalism as sort of people who take action against the status quo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we... we normally our uh, pre-show is from you know six until whenever you know but usually our pre-show starts when i arrive here at jim's place 
Today we actually have been going back and forth all day instead of doing proper work. Well, okay, we were both working, but we actually started off all day trying to get a handle on what radicalism because, I mean, it it can it it's it's so hard to pin down because you know you can you can be radical in relation to something else. You know, it's almost like on a sliding scale. I mean, you can what was the example we had? Um, radicals might protest. A radical radical might break into an animal testing facility to free the animals. And a radical 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 person would, you know, free all the animals and then burn the testing lab to the ground kind of deal, right? I'm not saying, like, that's, like, an actual yeah. example. But usually that was a, was a kind of a, a hyperbole uh, to illustrate that, you know, what would you say in the pre-show way? Like, the one man's uh, terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. It's, like, in relation to how you're looking at it... I didn't think you were going to quote me on that, but I... I um, there are lots of people who have said that. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, but, you brought it up. But the idea that you, in relation to me, you're radical, but in relation to AY, you're actually not... Yeah, and I think I know, I know I know lots of people who would who would be surprised, I suppose, that I sort of identify as a radical... Um, because I am not out protesting, and I feel like maybe I should be. Um, but I also, I mean, it is really hard for me to to honestly join in on a chant of whose streets, our streets, at a Take Back the Night rally, because uh, I am a six-foot-tall white male. They are my mm-hmm. streets. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. No, but a radicalism is... is Broadly defined as taking action uh, against the status quo. And similarly, um, moderates advocate working within the status quo or with the status quo in order to achieve change. I mean, that is the point of it, really, is to make change. Meaningful, hopefully lasting change. And radicals want change now. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of urgency. And that's why it's often sort of conflated with what I would call extremism mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean the, the 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 issue with the the, the you know, blowing up testing labs and stuff is there there's there are lots of ways that people are radical that are not mm-hmm. um, simply you know distru- or purely destructive mm-hmm. or at all destructive mm-hmm. or uh, the other thing I brought up earlier today was um, um, often the, the line starts for radicals when you're doing something which could put you in a position to be arrested. Not necessarily I mean, do something illegal, but you're sometimes you end up pissing off somebody enough that it, that it has. I don't think that's true. No, I mean no. I mean so here so here's an example of um, a radical action at a university, um, creating a space for women. Hmm. There's there's like 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 a women's center or something. I mean it acts. In the face of the status quo, which is ruled by patriarchy, which says that space, you know, either either it says that spaces are for men, or it says women should have no spaces, or it does that wishy-washy thing where it's like, well, you know, spaces are really for everybody, and so by excluding men from spaces, you're being dis- you're discriminating against them, mm-hmm. which is flatly not true. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and that's not a thing that you would risk arrest for. No, it's true. I take for granted that certain things that I would say, like, yeah, that I don't have a problem with are against the status quo. In yeah. Regard. Like, it totally makes sense you know. for me to, or it makes sense to me that you would make a space exclusively for somebody. Yeah. Uh, I mean, pride parades. Mm-hmm. Pride, no, don't get me wrong. You throw a pride parade in certain countries, uh, Uganda, for instance, Russia, Ru- Moscow banned pride parades uh, for the next 99 years. Um, hmm. but like you can, you can, I mean, you can get straight killed and people still do, but I mean, even, even pride parades in Canada, there, is, I mean, there's a stigma about them. It's just, it is, it is, you know, people say, well, well, why should, you know, LGBT people act out in that way? And the answer is because so often they are told to cover up mm-hmm. and be silent mm-hmm. and be invisible. One of our illustrious city councilors at a city council meeting, which is why I bring it up. It's public record. Said 
Um, he has, he has a he has a cousin or something who gay who but he doesn't but he doesn't flaunt it. it was the subject of some um, ridicule in our in our local queer community for mm. reasons which are obvious. I mean, the point is that you should flaunt it. We don't feel that people are flaunting their heterosexuality when they stop and kiss in the street. Mm-hmm. I saw a couple on Friday when I was at the grocery store. They were in their like forties, um, late late forties, early fifties, and they were they stopped in the aisle to kiss on an aisle, and it was the fucking cutest thing ever. <laughs> it was rad, and but but to get us, to, I mean, I mean, the sort of common juxtaposition of radicals and moderates sort of mm-hmm. comes out of that is is moderates want you to to exist within. A system that already, you know, has roots. Mm-hmm. It is there, mm-hmm. and radicals often want to smash that system mm-hmm. or dramatically change it, mm-hmm. and they demand that be that it be changed immediately, and they mm-hmm. take action to change it immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that that ultimately came out. I found when we were doing the pre-show is. Um, if you take your definition, not your definition, but the definition that we're kind of throwing out there for radical, Mm -hmm. there's two parts. It's action and against some sort of like norm, right? So moderates, and I'll say this as somebody who I largely see myself as a moderate, tends to view action in a more um, not strategic, what would be the best way? Uh, yeah, slow, deliberate, conscientious, not really ruffling feathers, non-confrontational. I'm not saying that this is all moderates, but this is definitely something that I'd like to do. You know, letter writing or mm-hmm. or um, having... <laughs> I just realized that it makes me sound like exactly like the race campaign people, having open conversations. Yeah, no, no, it. we can... We like, can... it's... Like, it, as much as we were railing against it, there was there was also an element there of it was not appropriate, uh, or imposing conversations is not appropriate. But um, yeah, we don't tend to view action as something that has to be immediate, visceral, and confrontational, which is usually the way you kind of when you think radical, you think of yeah. those okay. elements get evoked in you that it has it's it's immediate, drastic, it's not newsworthy but it's something that would be newsworthy it's something that uh, hits people and makes them think makes them question makes them well and i mean i mean even even if it doesn't do that it helps create space it helps i mean i mean the notion of of creating space for women or creating space for for trans people um it it helps show people the kinds of things that they can do and the kinds of things that are available like like I mean, part of the notion behind radicalism motivating direct action is the kinds of change that moderates advocate is slow at best. Mm -hmm. Like, if it happens, Mm -hmm. it is painstakingly slow. It doesn't just take years. It takes decades. Mm -hmm. And that is a decade of kids who will grow up thinking the way the world is is the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because that is what we think. It it was so strange. It was so strange when you said that, you know, one generation, 30 or so years, we keep not mortgaging, we keep um, bequeathing our future and that the next generation is going to finally get it right. Yeah. And there's no reason to think that because that's, as you said, that's what our parents thought. That's what their parents thought and going all the way back up. Like and, and there's there's some truth to that. There is a point where we are waiting for people to die. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we 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 are waiting for the old guard to leave the space mm-hmm. for change. Mm-hmm. But I think that in in leaving that chain, in putting off that change, we are becoming that old guard. Mm-hmm. We're 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 not saying well, you know, and, and I think that there are. Um, Lots of, of of moderates who would maybe who would probably agree with the statement that they're not saying not ever. Mm-hmm. They're just saying not now. Wait till the time is right. Wait till the mood is right. You strike mm-hmm. when the iron is hot. Mm-hmm. You don't just keep beating it until you get you know the shape that you need. Mm-hmm. 
you know you have to you have to bide your time and pick your battles and, and these are all these are all things that I have heard people say and these are all these are some of them things that have come out of my own mouth yep. in in I will say fool, more foolish days. Well, I mean, don't put yourself down. I was saying it in the pre-show. Yes, these it, are things that came out of Ryan's mouth literally it, it hours was, ago. It was. It was. These are these are things that I hold, you know, as as legit. No, I don't mean to say that radical is illegitimate, but these are um, viable options from the moderate camp. You know, sure. These are yeah. the, these are the reasons why you we know, move slowly. So, you know, you 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 move slowly to make sure that you get it right the first time. Yeah. Well, that, and that's that's part of the. Um, I don't. I don't know if this is uh, something that because I've I've seen it enough, or just through education and whatnot. Just the context. Often I find um, not radicals in this case. I'm just talking about people in general. Like we'll rush off without having proper context of sure. why something's going on, and you know, with how poorly we are at you know reasoning and how how many biases we have in our in our ability to perceive the world and process the world and act in the world you know it's it's almost i i my conclusion from that is uh you know move slower or be more deliberate yeah. be more conscientious don't well, and, and, don't and, go off half and make and make sure it's done thoroughly i mean and that's why you mm-hmm. do things like vote the right people into office yeah we've been working on that one for basically ever and that's where the problem comes is yeah it it favors the status quo. It favors the people in power. It favors systems of I don't, oppression. I don't think. I, I think that that's part of it. I think, but I, but I, I, I don't. I don't know that that gets to the root of the problem. Um, I think the 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 problem with the you know with with moderates and and sort of advocations of of, moder- of moderated responses and moderate responses. And this is the the thing. I think that becomes. I, I, I want to say once the first I think video we did this year that I did I called 2014 the year that we found out mm-hmm. is the year that, that that we found out about all these things that are happening and we just didn't know what to do about them and the worst part was realizing that 2014 wasn't a bad year like 2014 is a year where things were getting better and they're still horrible and it has it has been worse ever since like before that we just didn't know and the thing with the 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 advocation of of moderate style change is people are fucking dying out there you know people are people are dying over this stuff in Russia in Uganda, in the UAE, in Palestine, he, here in Canada, you know, in the states, all over the like, people are dying. People aren't. I mean, I mean, they are. They are dying. They're being trapped. I mean, again, thirty years is a generation of kids mm-hmm. who will grow up thinking that this is the way the world is. And what radicals say is we know what the world has to be like. We know that we need equality of opportunity. We know that everybody needs a fair shot. We know we you know we, we know some of what it means to have a fair shot. And if we can figure that part out, then we have at least figured that part out. And we can do that now. And it is better to sort of try and do that than face not just the notion that that another generation of kids will grow up thinking they can't but the fact that probably someone you know will die from these conditions whether it's from conditions of um racial tension or you know queer bashing or you know uh poverty they will die from it mm-hmm. I mean that is the the sort of the 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 thing it really comes down to is radical action is the only action available for marginalized people. Mm-hmm. I, mean, ra- I mean moderate action it works great and you can have letter writing campaigns, you can vote, 
and I don't advocate not voting. Mm -hmm. and that probably makes me, you know, more modern than I'd like to believe. But I, you know, I like voting. I think it's important, but I think it's as important as a lot of other things. But I can do that because I think people will listen. I'm not in a position where I know that no one is. If you're First Nations in, in, in Canada, you don't have a political party. <laughs> If you're poor in Canada, you don't have a political party. No. You can elect a party, a party that says it likes you and is made up of people that are not you and will never be you. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's all you got left is 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 yell and scream and take to the streets and be angry because you are angry. And I think that the thing that bothers me about about moderate sort of adv you know, advocacy, and I think it, it, it got hit pretty heated earlier today, was that that notion that what we are saying when we say "not now" is we are saying, "Be quiet." We are saying, you know, don't don't be angry. These things will come if you just wait. And there are people who have been waiting for 50 years. There are people who have been waiting for 150 years for this to happen. And people become radicalized when they are tired of waiting and watching these things happen. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have cowed you into silence. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I mean, like, um, it's that's 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 the thing that that's the challenge that a moderate has to to come to grips to or come to answer because ultimately our inaction or mm -hmm. our um measured action is ultimately going to be too slow to to save people immediately you know like outside of the first aid act I'm just going to say first aid not necessarily yeah. medical but the thing that that you can point to right in front of you and and affect change immediately right there you know that outside of those acts it the moderate act is is far too slow moving to to be able to to have any kind of wide sweeping uh ability to make changes it's the the we talked about this a little bit before and this is probably going to make me you know a little bit of a bad guy kind of deal like one of the, the one of the things though i don't like about the radicals and you know what a hardcore radical person might say this is that's part of the life you know you have to accept it is it's how it ultimately boils down to it's too difficult but it, in, in the sense of like when i see friends who become like physically sick or like they're they're so overwrought with stress because they 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 see all of these problems and you know they almost have like too big of a heart you know they feel for just everybody mm -hmm. and then they get frustrated with you know engaging in every single fight like they never they never they they never not let the fight go like they uh, just as an example you know calling somebody out right mm -hmm. you know, like every opportunity in which you're going to call somebody out for bad behavior they take it and sometimes you win Sometimes you're able to, you know, somebody's going to apologize. Somebody's going to learn the light of their ways. You know, like, I was like that. You know, once one time when I didn't understand, and I still make a lot of mistakes. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I mean, like, you know, at a time when I didn't understand, and I was asking like really bad questions. You know, like, why is why is this cultural appropriation? Why is it bad? I don't understand. Right? You know, I was asking really bad questions, mm -hmm. and I understand why they're bad now. So, but you know, when they live it every single day. You know, they're a part of it every single day and they, f they fight every single day and then they can't sleep and it just destroys them and mm -hmm. it destroys them mentally. It destroys them physically. It destroys them emotionally. I have a hard time looking at that and looking at a person who, who fights with every fiber of their being and, and coming to accept that this is all worth it to destroy this one person. Maybe I'm being, maybe, maybe this is hyperbole. Maybe it's not really that bad and I'm just misunderstanding or mischaracterizing but i mean it's just the moderate in me says like in the end i have to go to sleep because i have to get up and go and continue to do what i can the next sure. day or i have to i have to dig myself out of debt like i i have responsibilities to myself and whatnot and 
you know what? I'm not afraid to admit it's 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 hard work. It's hard work, and maybe I'm not up to to the muster to be able to do this. So it's interesting to think about that. But I mean, what I would say is that people who who do that are already fighting every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, marginalized people are 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 fighting with a system that oppresses them. Mm-hmm. That is what makes them marginalized. Mm-hmm. Whether that keeps them from, you know, the opportunities that everyone seems to say that they should have, or, or that they actually have mm-hmm. in a lot of more patronizing cases, or it gets them paid less, mm-hmm. or it gets them killed, mm-hmm. or when they are killed, no one cares, mm-hmm. or it gets them shamed mm-hmm. for, for being who they are. They are fighting this every day already. Mm-hmm. And that is an opportunity to fight it in a way that is maybe meaningful, in a way that they might be able to win. I would only I would only argue back that not every person who takes radical action is a part of the... Lo- no, that's not... I'm phrasing that wrong. Not every marginalized person... Sure. Also fights back. Absolutely. I mean, like, I mean, unquestionably. Like it's, it's. I'm not. It's, it's a special kind of person who's fighting back. Sure. And they have a hell of a lot more strength and character than I give myself credit for, kind of deal, right? Like it's. I recognize mm-hmm. that they are doing something that they can uniquely do. Um, I just also see what what happens to them. You know, like when it. I, think, I, I don't know. It's just. It's really. It's really hard to say that the radical action in that regard, the radical advocacy or the radical taking radical action, um, is is always superior. I guess you know. I, I forgot to mention this earlier because it's, I'm I'm moderate, but I don't. It's not a blanket statement that you should always be moderate. Is I, I do accept. That there is a time and a place to be. Every like, moderate does. Every I know. moderate's like There's, every moderate's not like not like not ever. Yeah, just not now. I, I would like to think it's not when you're gonna take mine, Jack, and therefore I'm gonna fight. I got, I really like to think I have slightly more character than that. Um, but like when it comes to violent upheaval, you know, like what's sure. going on over in um, the Ukraine, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't want them to fight. I don't want people to die and whatnot. But I recognize that sometimes the only way to defend yourself is is to to fight back. Sure. And I mean I mean we're not even talking about literal fighting. No, in a lot yeah, of cases. Yeah. I mean I yeah. mean again, like a lot of the, the radical actions that we, we have talked about, I mean, uh are small. Mm-hmm. They are they are they're non you know, they're non they're not violent. They're not aggressive, but they're still revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I guess the other thing that when thinking about um, the notion that is is radical action worth it is when someone. I mean, you use the example of calling out mm-hmm. when someone does something that you, that that is sort of worth calling out. You know, when they say something that is racist or. Um, sexist or, or homophobic or something like just just you know offhand remark kind of thing and that is exactly the kind of stuff that I think you would be like you know pick your battles mm. about yeah I, I talked about it like uh, the bar yeah. working at the bar yeah and there, there, there's it seems like in that moment we make a choice we are either the person who let that happen and who let that slide or we are the person who didn't. And we know. I mean, a lot of this stuff is driven by a, by a moral imperative. We know that that is wrong. We know that it is not okay to say that kind of shit or do that kind of shit. Moderates will agree with that. I imagine. That, you know, It is not okay to sexually harass people. The, dis- the difference is it is equally not okay to ever let that happen. I mean, we, we did a post on this uh, a while back about the um, Who Will You Help, the new mm-hmm. Ontario anti-sexual violence campaign. And mm-hmm. I, I, I was highly worked up in it, but it was that notion that um, this is an issue with sides. 
I mean, sexual violence is an issue with sides. And I know which side all of the people in my life who have been assaulted are on. And I want to be on their side. And if I let it slide, mm -hmm. I know that I'm not. Even if no one else knows, mm -hmm. I know. I know I let it slide. And that is my, I guess, we wanted to wrap up with our, our confessions. And that is my confession, is that I identify as a radical. Mm -hmm. um, in the sense that I am more radical than some. But I am insufficiently so. And I am more often than I would like to be. I am the person who lets it slide. Because I am scared of losing stuff, of losing face, of losing friends, of losing jobs, of... And, you know, I sort of cling to the things that I have. And in part, I probably, I cling to that status quo, knowing, you know, to that system, knowing that in some sense it does work for me. And it makes me feel really bad. Mm -hmm. But I still sometimes let stuff slide. And I know that that isn't okay. I'd say my confession is very similar it's it's fear based mine is that my smug moral superiority of action or position is only buttressed not by reason or any kind of you know solid foundation but simply because i am not strong enough to be able to to overcome my laziness and furthermore that my my own privileges blind me the idea that because I don't have to deal with it, I can turn a blind eye towards it. You know, I, I understand that. I just don't know if that is that, that is actually why I don't act. You know, because I'm, you know, I I can go to sleep at night, or I can choose to say, you know, what this is this is not my problem. I have my own problems. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to, to sleep comfortably at night. So I would say that's probably my confession. Is I, I, I'm not motivated by the same fear, but a fear that that's my entire position is, is on shaky ground. So, yeah. Yeah. That was heavy. <sighs> I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. This is the Contact Crucible Podcast signing off. Be a better person. <laughs>